He looked like a camel with a hump on his back, singing fa da da la da da la fa da da la da da la da. Singing fa da da la da da la, fa da da la da da la da. Woo! That is a hot sounding uh, banjo. This is cool. I just I just got this thing together. This is a H C Nelson banjo made in around Chicago, Illinois, probably in the 1890s. You can see it's, it's, it's assembled from J.B. Shaw parts. Shaw was one of the big makers in, based out of Chicago through that period. And a lot of smaller makers like Nelson uh, got all their parts from, from the Shaw catalog. You know, they had a deal with him or something. Um, it has these really nice inlays, plain square diamond inlays. I like these, plain, classy looking. A dead giveaway for one of these Chicago banjos is that Indian arrowhead uh, shaped heel plate right there. If you see that, you know you're dealing with an instrument most likely was was built in Illinois sometime in the 1890s. That's real common on these. <clears throat> this is, I think, this is a, a Stuart tailpiece that's missing the piece that would have gone in that little hole there. But I, I believe that's this SS Stuart tailpiece, which could have been on this. But I think originally it may, may have been something different. Uh, oh, the, uh, incidentally, this bridge is one that I made myself. This maple bridge. That's an old piece of ambrosia maple. Uh, that's a 5 8 bridge and the action is slightly high on this banjo. So this, this instrument needs a probably a half inch bridge. But I made that bridge myself and it sounds nice. You can even see there's one of the a worm, two wormholes that pass right through that leg over there. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can sell this bridge like that, but I can I can use it myself or make it as a gift for somebody for sure. But neat little nice bridge there, nice tailpiece. Okay, we got to look under the hood on this. This is important. This is really cool. So this is what they call a double spun over rim. You can see the first thing they did was whatever this rim is, a piece of uh, ash or something, they, they took this sheet metal, which is, I guess, uh, nickel-plated brass or something like that, and they crimped that over the inside, spun it over, right? Then they took a second piece of sheet metal, which you see here, spun it on the outside, and they crimped it at the bottom and at the top. When they crimped it at the top, they created sort of that little, like a cheap tone ring, but it works. This banjo has great um, you know, classic poppy sound to it. And I'm always going to point out, look at these fancy hex screws, dome hex um, screws in there. That's really cool. That indicates a, a more expensive instrument. There is a couple stamps, the H.C. Nelson stamps, on the dowel here, which I'm sure y'all are picking up right now. I can't see it from where I'm at, but they're on here. It has that uh, nice, you know, ebony peg in a slot here. That's great. But yeah, just a great banjo. Oh, I have to point out, it has a nice uh, repair on it, definitely. The neck is cracked through here. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see there's a little hardwood peg. So somebody would have, I guess, stuffed some glue in the crack if they could, rubbed it in there. And then they pegged it and, and uh, clamped this all together overnight, I'm sure. And it seems to be to uh, function perfectly now. I, I haven't, doesn't seem to be any problems. This banjo sounds great. It's fun to play. Uh, I am going to probably put, not have this bridge on it for long. This is just what I've used to get it set up because this 5 8 bridge is a, a hair tall.
great sounding banjo. Let's, I'll pick it one more time uh, so you can hear it. Lord knows when, farewell.